more specifically how you keep your avicularia slings, your spiderlings, the ones you raise from babies to adulthood. Uh, that's the topic we're going to cover just right now, so stay tuned if you want to know more about this topic. So as you've seen, we are in our green screen overlay. That means I want to showcase more detailed pictures and on how I prepare the tanks for avicularia specifically. Normally, as you know from my videos on this channel, I try to keep the tarantulas as natural as possible. That means that I go for very naturalistic conditions in terms of substrate and plants and everything. But when it comes to the, yeah, like care of arboreal tarantulas, for example, the ones we're talking right now, Avicularia, Iridopelma, uh, Tufuhlaena, all the ones within the Avicularine subfamily, then it changes completely because it is extremely hard to mimic the conditions these spiders do have in their natural habitat. So to showcase this, I'll try to illustrate something right here or right here. I'm not sure now, um, but think about it this way. When you keep a tarantula, which is terrestrial, then it lives on the substrate in the nature and you keep it the same way in your enclosure back home. But if you keep an arboreal one, that means that the actual arboreal tarantula in the wild does usually never reach the bottom. That means it does not see any substrate. Avicularia, for example, lives high up in the trees, about three to eight, 10 meters uh, above the ground. And there it has its retreat with its soil. Um, soil, I mean, it's webbing and uh, incorporated maybe some leaf litter and stuff, but there is no substrate involved. And that's the key factor because when you keep them in an enclosure, that means you always have to have a substrate layer for maybe plants, maybe it just looks better, but you also need it to keep the humidity at a certain point. And that's the key problem with keeping avicularia. So in fact, avicularia and the other genera from this subfamily avicularinae, for example, caribena, antilena, ibirapora, tufahlaena, iridopelma, all these ones are very sensible to high humidity combined with a bad airflow and bad air ventilation. So you most likely can also always only do it wrong. If you keep it with substrate and you keep the substrate moist to get a high humidity, the substrate is going to mold or it is just not the right condition for these arboreal spiders. Even though the slings, the spiderlings, who are out in the nature and living their life there, they are not usually high up in the trees, but they live in the one to three meters above the ground and sometimes even as low as one, the first meter uh, within the, the range of, of this jungle they live in. But even in the first meter, the soil and the, the substrate of the jungle is quite far away and you have a whole lot more of air ventilation. That means the humidity is always high, but they never face like problems with bad airflow or yeah, too, too high humidity in a, in a closed cage. That's only a thing we have in the pet hobby. So that's enough talk. I'll show you guys how we do it here in Europe and uh, very successful. So that's the key, key factor. So we use uh, this very substrate right here. It's called Ceramis. It is a sort of a uh, ton. I don't know the English word, but I'll look it up for you and write it down. So it actually is something which is biological. So it's nothing produced only from humans and stuff, but you're not going to find it in a jungle. But what it does, it, it keeps the moist thing, the humidity high because it yeah, sucks all the, the water in and concentrates it there 
and yeah, evaporates over time in a normal way. And uh, yeah, it was, it is still my favorite thing to, to use for all these genera and even more precise for raising spiderlings of these genera. So yeah, that's how I'll do it. I'll use one of the cups, then I make sure that it has this cross ventilation thing going so I do have a nice airflow even in a small enclosure. Then I use uh, ceramis as a substrate layer, put in a cork bark and later on I'll just put the spiderling in, wait a few days and after that it has settled up most likely on the top of the enclosure and yeah I can still miss the enclosure. The ceramis part gets uh, very moist when I moisturize it and it keeps yeah it keeps it wet for about a week one and a half weeks and after that I see it because the color changes from a darker tone to a light tone and that means I have to mist again that's all the magic and I don't have any loss with this kind of spiders so that's the secret tip from us Europeans to the whole world Feel free to use it if you want to. I don't make any judgment if you don't do it. So feel free, whatever you do it. If you had any losses, make sure you try to use this one here. Um, maybe it helps. It also depends, of course, on the country you're in. If you're in a country which has had high humidity in general, then it might be not the best. You have to try it out. But that works in Europe perfectly fine and we'll use it for quite some time and still use it in the future. So yeah, that's all the magic. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy this short episode on how to keep avicularia and more specifically raise on how to raise the avicularia slings, caribena slings, ibirapora slings. It doesn't really matter. It does come all within the same subfamily. They all have the same kind of problems or care conditions. Also, the ones from Psalmopoeus, Tapinogenius and the new genus uh, Pseudoclamoris, they are not in the very same subfamily, but you could keep them the same. I personally don't have any problems with them keeping them as normal arboreal styles like the one from Southeast Asia because they tend to dig, they tend to make burrows with a lot of substrate. Also, they do it in nature, unlike the avicularia ones normally. So I usually keep only the avicularinae, the ones I just mentioned with all the genera from South America, um, that way with the ceramis method. So feel free to use it, feel free to adapt it to your own like. And yeah, make sure you leave a comment down in the video on if you want to prepare it, how do you think how this method works? And yeah, if you like the video even more, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check all our In the Wild Tarantula videos out. It would be amazing to see you guys more often on this channel. And that's about it. I think we'll see each other next week somewhere and I'll prepare some more videos for you guys. So thanks for watching and see you.